welcome back uh, Sarah here now I'm going to show you how to make yourself a very useful very giftable very scrappy mug hug or mug cozy you'll be able to make loads of these for friends and family lots of gifts use up lots of scraps all your bits and pieces little orphan shapes you've got left over all sorts of things and stick with it because I'm going to show you how so let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need to make your mug hug or your mug cosy. Well, first of all, you need a mug. Here we go. Here's a nice plain mug. Um, we're going to zhuzh this up with our little mug hug. Um, and we're going to use it for measuring. So first of all, you need your mug. Then you're going to need some bits of fabric and an off cut of wadding come back to that in a moment then you're going to need some elastic so about three inches of elastic now here I'm actually using a hairband because they come in a lot of really bright funky colors and it's quite nice and it's easy so I'm using one of those uh, then I need a button I've got a nice big button here because I want a feature of the button and then I've got some sewing thread and a, a needle for basically sewing on that button so I've got a nice contrast there because it's going to go with the fabric that I've used for my mug hug so <clears throat> let's talk about the fabric because basically you need three pieces the same size first of all you need a piece of your lining or your inside you need a piece of wadding and you need some fabric for the front so how do you work out how much fabric you need well this is where the mug comes in so you can see here I actually got a tape measure and I measured the circumference of my mug okay so when you're um, measuring this you actually want to measure all the way around because you can see at that point my fabric almost touches but with the seam allowance there'll be a little gap in there and that's where your button and your elastic are going to go so this mug measured 10 inches all the way around so my piece of fabric measures 10 inches then I like a nice deep um, mug hug you could make a narrow one if you want to again that's driven by the size of your particular mug that you're you're uh, making this for and this one is uh, just under four inches so I've cut my fabric at three and a half inches again a lot of this is going to or some of this is going to disappear into the seam allowance so we're going to end up with about a three inch uh, deep area there which is a good a good way to hold to hold that mug so once I've chosen my mug um, and there's not much variation in mugs to be honest so don't worry about it too much because also with the elastic if you make it too small that little bit of elastic is going to stretch through there so you'll be fine so as I said I've got my lining I've got my wadding and I've got my top piece of fabric and they are all cut to three and a half inches by 10 inches now this is the outside piece that I've put together for my mug hug and you can see I've used lots of scraps here uh, bits and pieces left over you could keep it plain um, or you could applique onto it do a bit of free motion quilting on it if you wanted to I've just taken some scraps and just sewn them together this way and this way chopped into it added little pieces when I've needed to and used up a couple of half square triangles left over from another project it's up to you what you want to do but basically all three pieces will end up the same so now what we're going to do is construct our mug hug so the first thing I'm going to do is take my piece of wadding and then I'm going to lay the top or the outside of my mug hug on top then I am going to take my little piece of elastic so I have to decide at this point which end my button is going on to because my elastic wants to go at the other end of that and I think I'm going to put the button there because I've got a nice big section of plane there so this one is going to go at this end and we don't want it um, we don't want all of this we only need about half of that so what we'll do is we'll find the center point you can do that by folding it in half and marking it if you want to like that there's my center point and that is where my piece of elastic is going to go now this is the piece we're actually going to use 
okay so if you're just using a bit of elastic it will look like that but it's got to face inwards so when this is all sewn it will face outwards like that so pop that there and that will go on top and I'm going to pin this because obviously I want that to stay nice and centered um, and then I'm going to sew all the way around the outside leaving a little gap in the bottom so that I can get my hands in for turning but pin it all first so that everything stays together you can use your standard foot with this because it's not a particularly big project um, but sew all the way around pivoting at each corner and then come back to the bottom here now I will also do a start stitch or a stop stitch at the start and at the end so that when I'm turning through those threads don't come apart so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine now and sew all the way around so there we go I have finished sewing all the way around the outside leaving a gap for turning in the bottom um, I've also gone backwards and forwards over the elastic here a couple of times just to make sure that it's nice and secure now I'm going to grab a pair of scissors I'm going to chop off that other piece of elastic there and I'm going to trim these corners just so that we haven't got too much bulk inside our project all right so make sure you don't cut through these stitches but if you do just go back to the sewing machine and run over that line of stitches again and now we're going to reach inside that little hole you left and we are going to turn it through now if you've got um a sort of pokey stick or something like that or a pair of tweezers that are quite blunt at the end you can actually use those to push these corners out now with the seam allowance I have set my machine to do a center stitch on a standard foot which means the stitch is actually about three eighths of an inch but there we go you come in and you're going to poke those areas out make it nice and flat this is where you wanted to make sure that you didn't leave um, your threads loose that you did a little back stitch stop stitch there because otherwise it comes undone I've also used a blue thread to stitch this so that you can see it it does help if you use a lighter colored thread just in case it does show through so tuck these corners as well and it's worth taking a moment just to get them nice and neat now don't do this poking out with something that's sharp because you could actually end up poking a hole in your fabric which will be a nuisance and fold all these sides in and you can see when you hold it up to the mug it's already considerably smaller so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the edges a press and I'm going to tuck this gap here I'm going to tuck all the fabric inside and clip that closed for now to hold it all and being a bit more generous with the seam allowance makes this bit a bit easier I just close that until I've pressed it now you've got two options for closing up this gap here one is that you hand sew it so you just do um, a little bit of hand sewing on the bottom it's going to be on the bottom of your mug uh, hug anyway so we're not too worried about that about it being seen um, but you can also top stitch all the way around and that will close it that's what I'm going to do now I stitched with a larger than quarter of an inch seam allowance in the first place which means means I've got more than quarter of a seam allowance, quarter of an inch seam allowance tucked in there. That means if I go around and I top stitch at a scant quarter of an inch or a, my, a, a sort of smaller version of my quarter of an inch, it will actually sew that gap closed at the same time so I don't have to hand sew it. But do press it first and I think the top stitching as well does give it a nice professional 
finish it makes it look a little bit fancy so I'm going to go and press it and then I'm going to sew all the way around to uh, close up the hole in the bottom of my mug cozy or my mug hug so here we are we've finished basically sewing around the outside of our mug cozy both sides giving it a good press and that gap in the bottom has now been sealed up by our top stitching the top stitching also gives a little bit of reinforcement to that piece of elastic there a little bit extra because obviously we've been backwards and forwards now over it a few times so the final thing to do is to add our button so we need to be able to work out where our button's going to go so we take our mug that we've made this for and wrap your mug hug around it and you'll see that actually when we made it at first the fabric touched but due to seam allowances and things like that now we've got a gap that's why we why we actually cut it the same size because we want that gap but we do want this to be quite firm because you don't want to pick up your mug and your mug to slip inside it so what we're going to do is take that piece of elastic and I'm going to pull it through so it's under quite a bit of tension and that's where I want my button to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pencil. It doesn't matter that it's a pencil because it's actually going to be hidden underneath the button. But I have made a little mark there and I just want to make sure that that button is going to be straight as well. So actually probably want to move that mark up a little bit to here so that that's in a straight line. But that's where we're going to position our button because once this goes around the outside it will pull it nice and tight so you're not going to slip your hand's not going to slip on your mug so the next thing we're going to do is prepare our needle and thread now with a needle and thread sewing on buttons I um, use a double um, of thread and then tie it over so I've actually got four strands that means that I have to actually do less stitches to get the same amount of strength. But it does depend on how comfortable you are um, actually uh, threading a needle because you're going to need to put through two lots at the same time. So I'm just going to very quickly thread my needle using whatever technique you're comfortable with. Pull them all the way through and pull it nice and tight down to the end so that they're all the same size. Just a little bit more. And then tie a knot in the end. So I've got a good knot in there. And then I'm going to trim very close to that knot. OK, so I'm going to stitch from the top because I don't really want to see that knot on the inside. And actually, if I stitch from the top, it's going to be hidden underneath because I've got quite a generous button. It's not actually going to be visible. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull my knot in nice and close and then I'm going to try and stitch back as close to that first stitch as possible and come out on the top so I'll only have a little tiny bit of stitch showing on the back but that will be secure I'm also going to trim off that excess bit of thread there and I'm going to do a couple of stitches just to secure my thread because you don't want your buttons to come off so a couple of stitches pull it nice and tight and then another way to make it sure it's nice and secure is actually to take your needle wrap the thread around it twice like that pull that through and then that is super super secure so next i'm going to start stitching my button so i'm moving slightly to the right pull that nice and tight now because I've got four threads I can actually get away with just doing two stitches that way and that way because that's actually going to be eight threads but now when I'm stitching I'm not going through onto the back I'm keeping my finger there so that I can feel whether the needle goes all the way through so I pull that tight 
and then I'm going to wrap my thread around that and then go back in with my needle into that loop and that's nice and secure but I'm going to double up because I've got four holes in this and do the same the other way so come out underneath go through that fabric and again it's all about security with a button so stopping and doing just a couple of stitches through underneath will make it nice and secure now if you feel that that's not secure enough then go back and do a couple more stitches on the top but now I'm going to hold that thread again and do a couple of knots like this hold the thread wrap the thread around underneath pick up that needle and that button is going nowhere so I'm going to go back through one more time do a little stitch and then I'm going to cut off that thread as close as I can get in under there and there we go we've stitched our button on there and we're nice and secure you can also add another little bit <coughs> of security if you want to by a little uh, dab of nail varnish or a little dab of glue onto there and let it dry um, but you know this is not going to be put under that much tension but then what we do is we go and check it with our mug put a bit of elastic round and now that sits in there and we have created our very own mug hug or mug cosy it will keep your drinks warm just a little bit longer protect your hands and they look super cute and they make really nice gifts and you can personalize them you could applique somebody's name onto it or do little pictures uh, i've used scraps here so if you've made somebody a gift with special fabric then why not use the scraps left over to make them a little bit of tableware to go with it so now all that I need is to put something hot in there to fully test it out.